and it it's just like uh, you know Julie said they they called an agent tonight to see if they want to do seller financing on their uh, you know on their listing and he said mind you I have no idea what I'm do what I'm doing you know and that's yeah. the thing you you just have to check it out now he just said that but they wanted to roll it into a 1031 exchange so they didn't want to do that but if you don't ask you don't know oh here's here's a pro negotiating tip i love when i know people are are doing 1031 exchange yeah um, it, your options can be limited so you can end up having to do cash or something yeah by the way julie you can feel free to reach out because i i i do have funds available and stuff but um but one of one of my pro tips is like when you come across somebody doing a, a 1031 or wanting to do a 1031 they're very motivated yeah because very likely by the time they're either in a situation and they don't want you to know this they don't yeah. want you to know how motivated they are but very often they've already identified a property that they want to purchase yeah or and, and, are, and they're on a time limit yeah there i think it's like a 45 day time limit or something like that and so like you know there's i'll just say there's more motivation than they will let on with a 1031. Gotcha. so i i found that to be um i found that to be like pretty good where you can you can work out some some good deals with 1031 sellers. So so I guess Julie knows you because she said, okay, great, I have your card. So <laughs> Oh yeah. I was gonna say I thought I thought I knew who that was. So awesome. you know that and you know she said that that's exactly what the agent said. So I she was so nice. But now oh, there good. is there is a way that you can do a seller finance with a 1031 exchange. Now, I'm not well versed in it. I just know that there is a way you can do that. So uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, there are just not a lot of people know about that. So yeah. Um, well, know. and I'll just give you a, a for instance of a recent deal that I was working on. It was a portfolio deal and the seller initially wanted to do a 1031. Yeah. And so I assumed like I, you know, I gave them three offers. One was cash, well, really a, a bank offer. And yep. then the other two were um, creative. Yep. And so I figured, oh, for sure, they're they're going to want to go after the cash offer. So I made yep. it like pretty low, like, <laughs> yeah, like probably really tolerable low. And they actually were more interested in the creative mm. and I think part of the reason for that was because although people, you know, people that have a significant amount of their net worth in real estate, they've probably heard of 1031 exchanges and they're like, oh yeah, that would be, that would be awesome to do that. But if they're not aware of creative financing techniques, right? well, you might not realize that, okay, well, I can actually lock in the price, the price that I want right now. Yep and get that money out at a later time. Obviously in that situation, um, you know, in, in your typical seller financing situation, that doesn't necessarily allow for a 1031, right. but it does allow them to lock in the price they want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, especially right now, I, I would think people that have significant portfolios if they're looking to sell like any time in the next you know five or more years yeah you know i would i would think that they're fairly motivated right now yeah so i've actually came across this one i talked to this one uh you know this one seller and they said i told them i said you know you know, usually I try to do a 0% interest for creative. And she goes, well, why? When, you know, banks are giving either 6, 7% right now. I said, that's exactly why. 
you're concentrated more on the price, right? And I, and I ask them that. I'm like, you you want to hit that certain price, right? You just don't care about what you need it right now. Is that correct or is that not correct? You know? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need to get this, you know, whatever price. I said, okay, this is what my cash offer would be. And it's like 70% below that, you know? And, and I'm like, but if we were to do creative and go on terms, then, you know, if we do it 0% interest, I'm building in that interest with the extra price. Yep. You know, it's, it's not a, I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm going to pay that bigger price and then I'm going to pay another five, six, 7% interest on top. Why would I do that? I can just go get a bank loan for that. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. And, and that's the other thing too, is like, and I, I think people six months ago, people didn't understand this, but I think probably a lot of people are starting to understand this, that like, yeah. as interest rates rise, prices go down. Yeah. Like what people have the ability to afford drops as interest rates rise. So typically, you know, rising interest rates, prices are lower. Lower interest rates, yep. prices are higher. So it's, you know, it's in a way, it's kind of like a double edged sword, <laughs> you know, well, as, well, as well, far well, as well. like, yeah. Yeah. So, so K Caleb actually asked this question Can you offer a creative option on homes that need renovations, or do they typically look more move in ready properties? And, you know, yeah. I'll let you answer that. Yeah, you can absolutely do creative financing on properties that need renovation. Um, for instance, sub two, um, yep. that's a that's a great form of seller financing. Um, basically, the key, excuse me, the key with sub two is that you get the deed. So like you become the owner, but their mortgage stays in place. Right. So in that situation, it is your home and you are making that mortgage payment. And by the way, that mortgage payment, even at even at today's interest rates, like even if somebody got a mortgage in the last like three or six months and it's like five, six percent, mm -hmm. that's still going to crush hard money. Yes. No. So, you know, even in those situations, it can still it can still make sense. It's all about opportunity cost which is just yep. the idea of like, what are you giving up? So it's like, how I look at seller financing is if I was to go out and get funding for this property, and that's whether it's hard money, bank financing, um, capital that I've raised, et cetera, I'm looking at what's the cost of that money. 100%. So it's going to be anywhere from, for me, six to 12%. That's kind of, that's like my range. Um, and so, you know, if I'm entering into, especially a short term deal that I'm going to flip and if I'm able to get it sub two, you know, that can work out great. Similarly, yep. if you get, and this is what most, I would say, this is probably the most common like exit strategy. If you get a, if you get a seller finance deal is you're often not getting creative financing to flip the house and just sell it and exit right away. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes you're getting creative financing and you want to stay in that deal as long as possible. Yeah. And the reason being, because then you get, um, you get good terms locked in and you want to yeah. let inflation take care of the rest. And you just, you make more money from the appreciation, hopefully increasing rents tax benefits, etc. Um, and, and that's where you've got to make sure you cash flow. And this is where a lot of people with the creative deals, it's funny because I come across some creative deals where they're like, okay, 20% down, 6% interest rate. And, you know, and you're paying this higher price. Why would I do that? Yeah, I, I won't do there, there's no point in, in doing anything for 20% when I can go get a bank loan for right around the same amount, you know? 
Yeah. But the thing is, is that you have to look over again your opportunity cost. Exactly what you said. Uh, you have to look over the opportunity cost. And you know when you're doing a burr, when you're doing a, uh, or just renting it out. Say it's a rent ready property. Um, I had a, so I almost did a deal where. You know, it was a rent ready, basically rent ready. There just a few things need to be tidied up, you know, maybe a backsplash replaced or whatever, and that's about it, you know? And it was a creative deal. And I had to come across, I, I looked at it and we were gonna make, it was like gonna be like uh, two to $300 in cash flow. Yeah. Well, I made the mistake of not uncapping the taxes. And even though it would have been a land contract, the caps, the taxes would still be uncapped. So I had to now calculate in the new taxes and I didn't calculate in vacancy. So now I had to do that. It went from, you know, two to three hundred dollars a month in cash flow to a, a negative almost a hundred dollars a month. Yep. You know, after you figured everything out. And so I had to go back to him and say, unfortunately, it's not gonna work. He was dead set on, he wanted the interest rate as well as the price. And I'm like, yeah, this no, is, this is where you go. Yeah. It's like when you're talking creative financing, you have price, interest rate, term, um, and down payment. Forget, down payment, yeah. And like what I tell sellers that I'm dealing with, I'm like, you can pick one and I'll get the other three. Yep. Like I, and typically, you know, like you said, in these situations, it's typically somebody that's dead set on price. Yep. But yeah. If somebody's trying to, trying to get, you know, an extra, an extra one of the terms in their favor, like it, mm -hmm. It really can't be 50 50 otherwise it like it just makes no sense you are setting right. yourself up to lose money yeah almost guaranteed you have to get the other three if you're giving them one of the terms and if yeah. they if they're like oh well i want to get you know an awesome interest rate okay well then your price goes down yep i'm like i'm cool with that yep no so, yeah you have one hundred percent. So now, with so you went from ministry to whole, trying to do wholesaling. When did you go from wholesaling into fix and flip? Now you you said you came across where um, was he your mentor or was he just a? Uh, um, uh, he was a friend. A um, friend of yours. Okay. Yeah, he was like. About private money yeah he, yep he uh he was a part of a mastermind that that i was a part of gotcha. okay. um, that i was connected to because of my mentor um gotcha but yeah i i i always make a point of mentioning that comment just because it totally changed the direction that i was headed because right. before i was like i i love the idea of wholesaling but like just to be frank and i i don't say this lightly because i i yep. have had and do have so many headaches with flipping but yep. flipping is way easier <laughs> <laughs> like you know you know why i'm gonna tell you why because you know what you're getting yourself into you can pick and choose your deals and yeah you know what you're gonna be able to come across you you have that deal for two three months however long you're working on that you know and you know roughly what you're going to be getting at at the end now obviously things can change and you know yeah. the markets fluctuate and stuff like that but as long as you bake, bake that in you know like okay this is as long as we stick to our budget and we'll make a, a, a roundabout profit you know and yeah. I understand where you're coming from on that because yeah, like I, as me wholesaling as well, like I kind of wish I was flipping right now. 
to be honest. I just don't have the funds to be able to flip. And, yeah. you know, um, so that that's kind of the key, key thing. Um, so I'm happy uh, that, you know, you're saying that, that it's easier <laughs> because I do want to get into a flip. I, I, I do yeah. that's actually one of my goals is I do want to do I want to do a creative deal this year and I want to do a um, I want to do a flip this year so yeah. now whether that'll happen or not I don't know but I'm putting it out there in the universe to, to see if I can you know yeah. 